the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Your Locked On Avalanche, your daily podcast on the Colorado Avalanche. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody, what's going on? Welcome to the Locked On Avalanche podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host, Chris Maselli, with another episode of the podcast dedicated to your Colorado Avalanche. So on today's show, we're kind of going to be, I guess, not, not so much recapping the week, but there were, you know, yesterday, the Avalanche did have a few more signings. So we will discuss those and not that they're questionable signings, but for a team that really wanted to kind of keep as much intact as possible, is it a little interesting that the avalanche got rid of certain players and signed new guys when the dollar amounts were there were, were kind of equal to where the guys that they let go, they sign other places that are, are equal. And in one case, less than what the avalanche had them for. So we're going to talk about that and a few more things. Uh, but, uh, and we're going to look at next year too. I know it's really early to do that, but we will look at next year because it's very interesting when you look at the avalanche roster for next year and the free agents that they have, especially on the forward side it's pretty amazing. We will look at that. But first things first, follow the show on social media outlets, LOPN underscore Avalanche on Twitter, Locked on Avalanche on Instagram. Send questions, comments, concerns, opinions to Locked on Avalanche at gmail.com. And now tune into the YouTube page. Just search for Locked on Avalanche on YouTube and subscribe to that if you'd rather watch the show in video form. So, For the Avalanche, they went out and they signed some depth players, which we knew that they would do. They have to do that. They uh, they let go of some depth players that they decided not to sign. So you're going to have to replace guys like that. So they went out and they signed uh, Stefan Matteau. And they also went out and signed Dylan Sakura. And pure depth players, no, no doubt about it. I, th- I think, you know, th- these could be guys that because they're playing and, and Sakura played on uh, the Golden Knights, not a ton, so he only played six games for them last year. So, will he get more of an opportunity? I don't know. He might be going back and forth between the AHL, but he's a depth player. Um, and Mateo. Played a little bit more at Columbus. But again, two guys that you might need to cycle in and out. I think the Avalanche are going to rely heavily on their their youth. I don't think there's any question about that. So they're going to rely, you know, they're going to expect more out of guys like Newhook and and Ranta. Um who there's uh who's the other one I'm 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 drawing a blank on? Oh, Cout, Martin Cout. I hope he gets a a really good shot this year. Two years ago, he looked pretty good in the handful of games. Uh, Last year, I mean, I think he only played in a game or two, so they didn't give him a ton of opportunity. Uh, I kind of hope they do this year. So we'll see. But I think they're going to be relying. They're going to give their youth more of a chance this year because, I mean, number one, they have to. That these guys are now on entry level contracts. You don't want to burn those and not have these guys at least like sniff the NF or NFL NHL. Uh, but you're expecting guys like New Hook to take on a much bigger role. Definitely Byram, clearly Byram. What do they do with Bowers? Uh, Alex Bukage, does he get a, a chance? I think he, I think he'll, he'll, they'll bring because he's on his first year of his three year ELC. So they'll bring him up if necessary, when needed. Same thing with Jean-Luc Foudy. So they, they have so many guys and the guys that they have stockpiled over the years. You got to give them a chance sooner or later. And the Avalanche have a ton of youth. So those will be your depth guys mixed in 
with guys like Mateo and Sakura. And whoever's playing, whoever's got the hot hand, you, you, you play them. You play them. If anything, if Avalanche fans know anything, it is injuries. And you're going to need a lot of guys, uh, just assuming that next year is going to go the way that the past couple of years have gone in terms of injuries. Uh, you got to give guys a shot. So uh, you, they also went out inside, uh, signed Darren Helm from the Detroit Red Wings, which I think is a good signing. He's the veteran side of things. You know, uh, Sakura and Mateo, maybe not, you know, on the younger side, uh, Helm, 14 years and went in one place. So he comes over. He's kind of like your veteran guy. I think he's a good fit, but again, another depth player. The Avalanche have a lot of those, and 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 well, I should they they, they signed a lot of those yesterday because they have to fill up this roster. You know, they're they're top heavy right now with everything, everybody that's signed, and now you're getting those one year, one million dollar signings, which fill out your roster. Okay, fine. You let P.E. Belmar go. And you, in a sense, let Brandon Saad go. Belmar signed in Tampa for two years, two million dollars. So one, not two million dollars per year, one million dollar per year. Uh, let me bring up the cap friendly. And you had Brandon Saad. You were only paying him five million. He was getting six. Uh, Chicago retained one million dollars. He signed with St. Louis for 4.5 million. So he took less money and you saved money by getting uh, Darcy Kemper and not signing Philip Grubauer. So after all the signings from the past couple days, including the, the, you know, the smaller deals that they gave Helm got $1 million, one year, $1 million. Uh, Mateau got 750,000 and let me find Sakura. He got 800,000. So why did you get rid of Belmar? I mean, he's absolutely loved in the locker room and in the stands. The fans absolutely love the guy. Uh, he had a great season last year. I think he had his best season in terms of goals. I don't, I don't have his uh, career stats in front of me, but I, I'm pretty sure he had the most goals of his career last year in a shortened season, so that's impressive. I'm a little surprised. You know, you, you need those depth guys. Did they just not want him around him, or did they think he was slipping? I mean, I don't think his numbers really say that. I'm going to bring up his uh, stats right now just so I can prove myself right. Um you know, if you're going to get rid of a guy because you feel like, you know, he's aging, he's 36 going on 37. Uh, where's his career stats? Here we go. Um, so the two years he played in Colorado are the only two years he had nine goals. He had nine goals in each of those seasons. So, yeah, I mean, he only had two assists last year. So that is a big hit. I mean, he only had, that was at 11, 11 points total. But it's not like he's a liability out there. You know, he, he works his butt off. He, I, I think he, that's the depth kind of player you want. Maybe the avalanche just thought because he is aging, you know, going to be 37 years old next year. When's his birthday? Uh, in March, he'll be 37 years old. Do they just feel, you know, they, they want to stay on the younger side and they kind of, you know, they, they did in a sense getting Helm. He's 34. I want to say. Uh, yeah, 34. So you get two to three years younger than that. I don't know. I just, you know, <laughs> Joe Sackick likes, he wants to keep this team together as much as possible. So in doing that and getting rid of Belmar just to bring in another player who's making the same exact amount, uh, was a little surprising. Now with the Brandon Saad side of things, According to Cap Friendly, you have $7.13 million left in cap space. If you had signed Saad, let's say you didn't sign uh, Mateau 
or you did not sign Sakura, that's 800 and 800 and 800. We'll just, you know, make it easy. That's $1.6 million that you can add to that 7.13. So that's eight point. We'll just say 8.2. You can sign side for 4.5. And then you still have $4 million or, or a little bit less than that to sign Tyson Jost. That's, that's who you need right now. That is your outstanding restricted free agent outside of Dennis Gilbert. And I don't think those two guys are going to make up 4.5 or $4.2 million. I don't see that happening. So is this, I mean, are they bad moves? No, they're, they're not horrible moves. And, you know, can Helm and, and, you know, maybe put up the same amount of numbers that Belmar can. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm just coming from the, the standpoint of keeping the team together. And, you know, we all hear how much of a tight knit group these guys are. And Belmar was almost the ringleader of that. So I am a little bit surprised they, they didn't. Now they're, they're not going after, they didn't go after Saad, but are they going after other guys? We will get into that. Well, let's get into that right now. <laughs> um, I, I've heard things that they they're, they want to go after uh, Tomas Tartar. But I've also heard that they're backing out of that because guess what? He wants to kind of stay. I think he made five, a little bit north of five last year. And he wants to stay in that, that realm. And now you've kind of hamstrung yourself because you might not be able to afford him. And you can't tell me they didn't at least talk to Brandon Saad to figure out what he wanted and what, you know, his, his asking price was, did the avalanche just assume? Cause Brandon Todd's not, he's not that old. Is he 28? I believe 29 at the most. I don't have his uh, stats in front of me, but I will bring those up as well. Um, I know he's not 30. So did you assume because he's not, you know, uh, uh, an aging, he's 28. I mean, it'll be 29 right around when the season starts. Okay, so what? Gabe Landeskog's 28, and you just gave him $7 million. I'm not saying Brandon Saad is Gabe Landeskog, but he played fantastic his one year with the Avalanche. So why not entertain that? Were the Avalanche afraid because he was making $6 million? He was going to want that amount? or close to it. I'm assuming they had to talk to him and he, they knew what his asking price was. If they didn't know that and St. Louis kind of swept in and signed him for $4.5 million avalanche got jobbed or they got had or both. So, and I am surprised. I, I would have to think that, you know what? And I'm thinking about it a lot. I don't know because I know Brandon Saad was saying he wanted to, he, he, he wanted to stay in Denver, but he was saying that when he got traded there, he was saying this would be a great place to retire without, you know, skating a single stride for them. And I don't think he had, you know, I think he enjoyed his one year there and he knows he's on a very good team. So why would he not? talk to Joe Sackick and say, Hey, uh, I want to stay here. $4.5 million. You can have me. And he signed after the Grubauer thing went down. The Kemper thing went down. They knew where they stood. I'm a little bit surprised. They didn't go after him a little bit harder. And now the guy that they're rumored to be going after wants more than what Saad got. So they're backing out of it. I don't know. The, the, they, they still need uh, you know, maybe cause, cause I mean, here's your lines. You got Miko, obviously Gabe and McKinnon on your top line. I mean, who's your Burkowski, Kadri and who, it, I mean, you put Jost up there cause he can play either side. Do you put Nachuskin up there? Okay. I mean, your second line is okay. It's fine because you're going to do Burkowski, Kadri and somebody. And then your your third and fourth lines, I mean, your depth is not what it was last year. I don't think so. 
I think it's good. Uh, you know, you're, I think New Hook is going to be a staple. I think he, he, I think he is going to uh, set himself, set himself up. He's to 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 have a really nice season uh, and kind of get his his feet wet. But he's going to surprise a lot of people uh, with how comfortable he is at the NHL level. So he's going to be on. I mean, they had him on the second line when they first brought him up. That's still a possibility. But the one thing we do know is uh, Bednar loves to change lines all the time. So whoever we're talking about here, I mean, that could change 10 times, you know, in the first week of the season. We have no idea. But, I mean, you're looking at Helm, Maltsev, uh, Mateau, Kiefer, Kiefer Sherwood, Sampo Ranta. Does Bowers go up there? Does Kaut go up there? Logan O'Connor, obviously, he's going to be in there. So you have you have good depth players, uh, but now you have a handful of them that have never played for this team. So there might be some growing pains on your bottom six for the first month or so. And that's okay. That's not the end of the world. But you could have kept a guy that's already comfortable in that role in Belmar. So a little bit surprising there. And the Tyson Jost thing, he's not signed. And this is two years in a row now where Tyson Jost is the last person outside of Dennis Gilbert. But, you know, let's face it, Tyson Jost is, is going to command more than Gilbert is. Um, it's two years in a row where he is the last person to sign. And last year, it was well after everybody else was signed. It was like two weeks after everybody was signed. And we kind of assumed, and although nothing was really confirmed that they were trying to shop him, uh, I think to Florida and maybe a couple other places, but that's what we heard. Um, oh, there's my daughter's uh, princess castle right over there. If you can see it on YouTube. Um so yeah, is that going to play out again? Is for whatever reason, are we going to have a drawn out process to get Tyson Joe signed? I hope not. I mean, it should be a pretty easy deal. Of course, he's going to get a little bit of an increase, but uh, I don't think it's a thing where they're they're worried about the the dollar amount. It's probably the term, and I think that'll get sorted out quicker than it did last year. We shall see. And something like it's not really been talked about a ton, not because it's, a, it's not a big deal, but in the avalanche world, it kind of is TJ Tynan signed with the Kings, the Los Angeles Kings. And that that's a little bit surprising. I mean, he was the MVP of the AHL last year. And, uh, you know, he, he's one of those guys that you can bring up and with the avalanche and their injuries left and right for the past couple seasons. He was needed a couple times. So a little bit surprising that he left, uh, but the, the Kings kind of swooped in and, and took him. So he's not available to you anymore. Is that like, again, is that the end of the world? No, because you have, you're going to be relying on these, these youngsters a, a lot more than you ever had, but still he, I mean, if he was in your system, He'd be a guy that you bring up. Maybe they felt like, hey, we can't keep him around. We can't sign him again because we can't keep him around. We got to get these kids going. I can understand that. But he was a, a reliable guy that you could bring up, slot into the fourth line, and you know he's up there for a week or so. He's not going to make waves or anything, but you know he's, he, again, comfortable in the system, knows what's expected of him. And uh, he's gone too. So, uh, yeah, I mean, again, not questionable signings. Not saying, like, I, I think these guys will be fine. I think they know their role. Um, and as the season progresses and they get more and more comfortable, I think everything will be fine. All I'm saying is it's a little bit surprising, especially with Belmar, uh, who signed the same exact amount as Helm did. I don't know. Maybe they just wanted to, like I said, the age thing come into play. I don't know. 
But we are going to look at next year. And I know, you know, we haven't even played this year yet. But uh, these are things that you need to do if you're the Avalanche front office. So we're going to look at the players that they have up for free agency next year. And it is a daunting task for next year for Joe Sackick. Everybody's talking about two years from now when McKinnon is a free agent. Just wait till you see what they got on their plate for next year. Uh, but first, we're going to hear from Built Bar and BuiltBar.com. And Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar on the market. And did you know that they have so many delicious flavors? There's something for everyone. And when you talk to the Built Bar fans, they all have their favorites. You can pick between coconut, raspberry, mint brownie, double chocolate, salted caramel, cookies and cream, German chocolate, The list goes on and on, and if you haven't tried them, you can get a mixed box where you'll get two of each of the nine regular flavors. Not only are Built Bar flavors the best tasting, but they are healthy. You can check out the macros. 17 to 18 grams of protein. Calories range from 130 to 180. 4 to 5 grams of sugar, 4 to 5 grams of net carbs. Amazing flavors, all tasty, all healthy. And Built Bar is the official sponsor, excuse me, the official protein bar of the U.S. track and field team. So go to BuiltBar.com, use the promo code LOCKED15, and you will get 15% off of your order. Once again, that promo code is LOCKED15 for 15% off at BuiltBar.com. So we knew this year, I mean, like every year, uh, a team is constructed. You have your your stars. They pretty much stay uh, firm. And they stay in the same city with the same team. And then exactly what's happening with the Avalanche. You, those depth guys, they come and go. And Joe Sackick even said last year, this is probably, you know, one of the best teams we're going to have. Maybe one of the deepest teams we're going to have. You know, we, it's not now or never, but it, they had the, a great opportunity to win it last year. We all know how it, it fell apart. So the team is coming together for the most part. It's it's all set to go. A couple uh, free agents left to sign. But if you look at next year, and I'm looking at Cap Friendly's uh, website for the Avalanche, when it comes to forwards, and I posted this on Twitter yesterday, so if, if you follow me on there, you're hearing it again on, on the show. When it comes to forwards, outside of the players who are on, the, on their entry-level contract, Guys like Newhook, Ranta, uh, Foodie, Bukaj, outside of those guys. The Avalanche, the only forwards they have signed next year, after the season that we're about to play, next year is Landeskog, Rantanen, McKinnon, Comfer, and Jason Megna. That's it for forwards. So like I said on Twitter, the team that you see even this year is going to be wildly different in a year from now. And that is why I think the avalanche are going to give these youngsters as much of an opportunity to prove themselves as they can this year. And that's going to get tricky because you have to give them an opportunity to prove themselves, but you're expected to compete for a Stanley cup. So how much leash do you give them? Because you can't keep throwing them out there and you're losing games. If you were, uh, uh, you know, a, a lower status team or even a mid range team, you'd put them out there much more than you would than if you're the avalanche team built as you are right now to go compete for a cup. Cause then you'd give them, all the, you know, a full season's worth of go get your feet wet, go learn on the job, throw you into the wolves. That's going to happen here and there for, for a handful of these guys. And they're going to, for the following year, you might have those guys that break out. You expect new hook to, uh, maybe Ranta. I think they're going to give him a lot of play. Uh, but can someone like foodie break out? And be like, wow, this guy really came on the scene. Same thing with Cout. Can he get going in the pro? So they're hoping some of these guys can solidify a roster spot for next season. Number one, because their cap number is really low. 
And so you can slot them in to some of these restricted, unrestricted free agents that you have, and you have a ton of them. Burakovsky, Kadri, Nachuskin. Now you have Helm, that is. Uh, Mateau is, that you just signed, obviously. Those are lower cap numbers, obviously. But all of those guys, unrestricted free agents. Not to mention, if you want to go on the goalie side, both your goalies are unrestricted free agents next year. In Kemper and Francois, both of them. Do you sign them? Do you keep them? I mean, that that's all for next year about, you know, guessing who they're going to sign and all that stuff. But just the sheer number of unrestricted free agents that you have. The only restricted free agent that you have is uh, Maltsev, the one you got from the Devils. So you think the team is looking a little bit different now? Wait one year. Because the avalanche, and and I think it's a good problem to have because you always have to be cognizant of that Gabe Lant, or excuse me, the Nathan McKinnon deal he's got this season and then next season, and then he's getting a huge pay increase. That might double or close to it. He's making 6.3. I don't think he's going to make 12.6, but he's going to make 10 to 12, somewhere in there. So, you know, and when that season comes, Eric Johnson's money is coming off. That $6 million is coming off. So the Avalanche, are, I think, will be fine when it comes to having to pay Nathan McKinnon. But all of these forwards, defense is fine. Defense, you're, you're, you're set up. But on the forward end, it's unrestricted free agents left and right next year. So... You know, go go win it, and then we don't have to you know worry about oh we got to construct another team and who there's going to be a lot of new faces next year. And now we're talking about these guys that are, you know, might take a month or so to gel with the team. I mean, if you have to sign a bunch of uh, you know new new free agents to come in because the the youngsters are are you know not fully ready yet to take over you basically have a brand new team. Now this guy's at the top, you know, is this, it's, you know, ranted and Landis Scott McKinnon. Remember a couple of years ago, we were saying we're a top heavy team. I don't see that happening again because you, you're going to have a lot of money in cap to go sign guys. Like if you can't resign Burakovsky or he wants a massive increase, you're going to have to go out and find another Burakovsky. You're going to have to find guys to, to play those roles and you just can't rely on all of these youngsters, but man, Sackick work is cut out for him next season. And I know that's next season. And for most of the fans, you're like, I just want to pay attention to this season. And that's completely fine. I completely understand that. But guys like Sackick and the front office and guys like me who look at that stuff, uh, you have to keep that in mind. You really do. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I mean, that, that's something for, for next year. But just to put it on everybody's radar right now, it's going to get interesting. Very interesting. So, uh, and obviously enjoy the season and let's go win a Stanley cup. But as soon as that season's over this coming season, it, it is going to be, uh, long nights for the front office for the Kyle I and figure, figuring this out. So that's going to be it for today. And that's going to be it for the week. So, uh, thank you everybody for tuning in. It was a wild one. And, uh, if anything happens over the weekend, obviously we will be talking about it on Monday. Uh, thanks for tuning in every day. It's always appreciated. Um, so yes, yeah, so drop me a line. Anything you guys want to talk about locked on avalanche at gmail.com or follow me on Twitter. That's where I do most of my damage L O P and underscore avalanche. And thanks for everybody tuning in on the YouTube. So that's going to be it for today. That's going to be it for this week. Once again, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. It is always, always appreciated. Uh, Have a good weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Here's Jovi.